During the 1990s, numerous Japanese-developed RPGs would go on to become timeless classics, leaving an undeniable mark on the legacy of the genre. Many of these would also spawn series that have endured until today. One such game is 1996's Star Ocean for the Super Nintendo, which was developed by the then newly formed Triace, a studio comprised mostly of staff who previously worked on Namco's Tales of Fantasia. Unfortunately, this version never saw a release outside of Japan, but its sequels would find their way to Western markets. In 2008, Star Ocean First Departure for the PlayStation Portable finally introduced Western players to the origins of the series in the form of an enhanced remake. Now with the release of Star Ocean First Departure R, Square Enix gives us another chance to dive back into the past to experience the game that started it all. It offers a few minor bells and whistles and updates the visuals to HD, but it largely remains the same as the PSP version. Enhanced graphics look decent on a modern TV, but definitely benefit from the smaller screen of the Switch in portable mode. The sprites and pre-rendered areas still impress, but the 3D overworld map disappoints with large, bare-bones environments that are hampered by short draw distances. We have company! Here they come! Both versions run well for the most part, too. The PlayStation 4 version runs smoothly with no noticeable issues, while the Switch version only suffers from minor frame rate drops when traversing the overworld and a brief stutter at the start of some battles. The character portraits also receive a facelift. These fantastic illustrations invoke the original designs of the characters from the 1996 version of the game. The increased detail gives them more personality when compared to the flat nature of the PSP portraits. There's a small problem, though. These new portraits don't match the in-game sprites or cutscene renditions as well. It's jarring enough that it takes you out of the game every now and then, but you can toggle between the new portraits and the PSP versions at any time in the options. This is horrible! Enemies! Star Ocean's combat mechanics offer total freedom of movement on the battlefield, and you're able to execute basic three-hit attacks, along with up to two special abilities that can link together into simple combos. The AI settings for your other party members are competent enough to get the job done, so you don't have to worry too much about micromanaging them, except in a handful of tougher encounters. This battle system was fairly unique back in 1996, but it's somewhat simplistic by today's standards. More recent entries, as well as several other contemporaries, offer up more complex and diverse real-time combat systems that feel far more satisfying than what you find in First Departure. There's just not much depth to the combat outside of careful positioning and determining which enemies to target first. Contributing to the battle system's lack of depth is the game's relatively easy nature. Though there are slight difficulty spikes on a few bosses, it's nothing a few attempts or a slight tactical adjustment won't solve. The only real challenge presents itself at the end of the game. Much like other RPGs of its time, First Departure prides itself on its final gauntlet of punishing fights and boss encounters. <laughs> Even then, the difficulty of the sequence is merely a symptom of the game expecting you to be at a certain level by this point, so if you're under-leveled, you're going to be in for a rough time. While it's easy to gain levels virtually anywhere, nothing really demands any significant amount of grinding to advance aside from the final areas. Ha! Swirl! Though the basic combat is lacking, the skill system compensates with its comprehensive nature, which holds up even by today's standards. As you level up, you earn skill points to spend on certain attributes. These fall into one of four categories, and each category has three tiers of skills available. In order to unlock these skills, you first have to purchase each type from shops in certain towns. Once unlocked, you use your skill points to level up each unique ability, and each ability caps out at level 10. You can spend points on traditional stuff like improving offensive, defensive, and spellcasting abilities, but also on one of several special abilities like crafting, scouting, or even playing music. The range of elements you can influence by leveling up certain skills is impressive, however, some of these mechanics could have benefited from a bit more explanation, or at least, a better feedback system. For instance, the crafting system largely feels like a matter of trial and error. Further complicating the matter is the fact that certain characters have special latent abilities that make them better suited towards certain types of crafting, so you need to be careful about which skills to level up for each party member. Another minor complaint with the skill system is that once you make a choice, there's no undoing it without reloading a save. Once you've spent your skill points, you can't undo the choice. There's no confirmation prompt, so if you hit the button and spend points on something by mistake, you can't get them back. There really should be a confirm prompt at the very least, or better yet, an option to respec at any time. It would go a long way to aid a system that appears to thrive on experimentation. 
The overworld is rather bland, with little to do other than traveling between marked destinations, so there's not much incentive to explore. That doesn't mean there's a lack of extracurricular activities, though. Several towns and dungeons include secondary tasks to tackle, like fighting through the ranks of opponents in a battle arena for various prizes. There's also a handful of secret dungeons that provide extra challenge with irresistible rewards. Getting around to all these destinations is made even easier courtesy of another new addition. In the PSP version, it felt like you moved at a snail's pace, but First Departure R's new speed-up option definitely helps improve the pacing. Perhaps the most distinct aspect of the original Star Ocean is the ability to recruit optional characters. You come across some of these individuals naturally, while others take more detective work to uncover. What makes character recruitment so appealing outside of their abilities in combat is that your party makeup at certain junctures determines how you progress. Some unique story elements can only be seen with specific party compositions, not to mention there are lots of variations of the ending that play out based on who you recruited and the strength of relationships with different party members. Witnessing more of each character's story, as well as strengthening your bonds with them, is possible via private actions. When you're near major landmarks, there are often on-screen prompts to begin these special sequences. However, to see the entire private action, you need specific characters in your party. Recruiting new characters and engaging with them in private actions is completely optional, but it adds so much more to the character arcs and the overall lore. It's not possible to see everything on a first playthrough, though. That requires a minimum of three playthroughs, which is a tall ask of anybody when it takes roughly 20 to 25 hours to complete each one. However, a single playthrough still feels satisfying since you'll always get a proper conclusion no matter who joins your party. First Departure starts off with a really intriguing sci-fi premise, but soon gives way to an all-too-familiar fantasy setting for the majority of the game. It ultimately feels like a bait-and-switch, kinda like looking forward to a new episode of Star Trek, only for it to be set on an underdeveloped planet that looks like an average Renaissance fair. As the heroes search to uncover the source of a mysterious disease, your journey is rife with mysteries that eventually culminate with a satisfying payoff that delivers on the science fiction. However, it's not unreasonable to expect some more space-themed elements in a game called Star Ocean. We've got enemies! On the surface, First Departure's soundtrack shares a lot of similarities with other RPGs of the time period, but what's most impressive is the presence that many of the tracks command without being overly bombastic or too chaotic. Instead, many of the best tracks, including the battle theme, manage to carry themselves despite their lighter tones. The only real downside is the new theme song and opening, which don't sync up as well as the ones found in the PSP version. You called for us, sir? Ah, Roddick. Good to see you here. We've got trouble. Take a look at this. In addition to the combat, Star Ocean initially drew attention for its inclusion of significant voice work, which wasn't common for games yet. Carrying on that legacy, First Departure R features the PSP's English and Japanese audio, as well as a brand new Japanese dub based on the original Super NES version. Each offers its strengths and weaknesses, so it really comes down to preference, which is perfect since you can quickly toggle between them in the settings menu. Yo, Rati. Star Ocean First Departure R is the best way to experience the original entry in a historically important series that often gets overlooked. It offers moderate quality of life improvements over its PSP counterpart and retains the portable appeal with the Switch version. There's a solid RPG here full of unique mechanics, charm, and lots of originality, but its age is definitely starting to show. We could have gone easy and still won. Easy Allies reviews are made possible by generous viewers just like you. If you like what you see, check out patreon.com slash easyallies to help us make more. For just $1 a month, you can gain access to weekly updates, spoiler discussions, and exclusive shows. Don't overestimate your skills, you.